Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. I'm excited because this is one of those times I get to see a final product come all the way from prototype stage all the way to the end. Seems to be happening quite a bit lately. I guess that's because I did quite a few of the Kickstarter previews from last year on some really popular games and now they're starting to finally hit doorsteps. And the coolest thing opening ever was to see Founders of Gloomhaven in Alt's Glory completely finished. And I remember when I played through this using the prototype, it was very much a prototype. Everything was paper. It was very uh, organically created. Uh, printing quality was low, but that's what a prototype is all about. It was about flushing out the details and uh, getting the rules just right. We did a fantastically long uh, playthrough of Founders of Gloomhaven where we covered uh, the basis of this game in terms of how to play it solo. There is a lot of mechanisms and a very unique city building engine within this one. Isaac Childress is the creator of this game. So if you are familiar with Gloomhaven as a most of the board game industry is now, this essentially sits itself as a story prior to Gloomhaven even though it's released afterwards. The, the title alone, Founders, kind of gives that away, but basically Founders of Gloomhaven is going to give you the ability to create Gloomhaven before it was anything but just a piece of empty land. So what's really cool about this is if you're playing this with uh, up to four players, uh, you can go ahead and basically battle it out as to who can be the best city builder. However, if you're playing this thing solo like I did on my channel, as that's what my channel focuses on, then there is a lot here that really can't be found in many other city building type games. And Isaac's done something really, really special with this. And he's also even added linkages from founders into Gloomhaven so that you can carry a couple of cool elements from the Founders of Gloomhaven game into your Gloomhaven campaign and have that continuation of storyline and a couple little tweaks in there. Now I can't go into specifics about that because I need to crack this box open to find exactly what that is because it, it has been about a year since I've looked at this thing. So enough talk, let's crack this thing open because that's what you're here for. So again, Isaac Childress was the one who created this and we're gonna flip this over on the side so you can see uh, the side of it as well. So it says Founders on the side. The artwork for the game is fantastic. Um, you're going to see a shimmer on this. It's going to be quite annoying, but don't worry. I will take that off in a second. And you'll be able to see the box in all its glory. So here is what the back of the box looks like. So again, it's got the game board here. You, for those of you that watched my playthrough of the prototype during the Kickstarter, uh, this map is very much familiar to you. You'll be able to recognize it right away. It's a double-sided map. Um, it's got many, many different tokens, and the quality and components are going to be way up the charts. It's got some. E it's even got some uh, nine playable races with... Uh, with actual meeples uh, drawn into them. I don't know if you can see that. I'll be able to show you that when we actually open up the box, but you can see they're not just standard meeples. They actually have some art uh, added to them to just make them stand out that much more. I'm really excited for this because so much of this was so empty of color and, and design. And a lot of these uh, architects and different cards that are up here, um, which again, I'm forgetting the names of half of them, uh, didn't have any actual art. They were just presented as a, a single word, and that's all it was. So this is going to be crazy to actually see the final thing of this. So I'm going to read this to you so you can understand the backstory and founders. So the city of Gloomhaven was not always a bustling hub of commerce and intrigue. Hundreds of years ago, it was nothing but the ruins of a long-dead civilization. But as the humans spread across the map, making a tenuous pace with Valras, the south, the Inex and Vermlings of the forest, the Savas deep in the mountains, and the Orchids and Quatrels across the ocean, plans were drawn forth to build a town on the eastern shores. It was to be a symbol of how many races working together in harmony. This is the storyline of that endeavor. All right, so... This is again, it says right here too, it says in Founders of Gloomhaven players will lead a race of Gloomhaven residents in an effort to be the most influential contributor to the city's construction. Through card-based action selection, players will leverage their own resources and the resources of other players to construct advanced resources and prestige buildings on a shared city board. Now, as I'm seeing this kind of stuff, I'm already starting to get excited because I'm starting to remember some of the terminology that, uh, that I learned quite heavily during the playthrough uh, of the prototype. But man, this is going to be a cool experience to see this thing finally 
opened up because I, I, I've been waiting for this for a long time. It's been quite a while since I played Gloomhaven on the channel. Um, I've had people that have uh, that have said they've really enjoyed it and are still enjoying that playthrough today. Uh, so it's really cool to get something else to add to the world of Gloomhaven. So here you go, guys. Here is the picture of the front of the box. I know we're five minutes in already, and I'm got too busy gushing and stuff like this. But it's a very very cool art design. I'm going to give you an even better look at the art. It's just absolutely fantastic. Um, so we're going to go ahead and crack the box open and see what we got inside. So the first thing you're going to see inside the box is the rule book. So here is the rule book for the game. Pretty straightforward. It's going to have a little bit of a word, a little bit of a blurb at the beginning, I should say. Uh, you got your index here. You've got uh, all your components laid out nicely so you can see exactly what you should expect to find in the box. Uh, setup starts on the next page. You can see that the manual does follow a Gloomhaven-ish style um, in terms of its rule book, so all the symbolism, the icons, the way in which it's written. If you've played Gloomhaven before, you're going to find that the rules are set in a similar tone and feel. So that's what I'm kind of getting from the vibe here. They're even using the same uh, iconography and things like that. Look at the pictures on this stuff now. So some of this stuff before when I was playing with it had absolutely nothing. Um, it was very bare bones, but now it just has so much color, so much life. That is super cool. So I'm not going to focus too much on the rule book besides the fact to just show you a number of pages in it so you get a general idea of what it looks like. But uh, ah, how many pages does this thing run? It runs about 19 pages. The 20th page just has a couple important reminders in the back and some credits. So the uh, artwork is... Uh, and the graphic designer are mentioned on the back as well. And then, of course, a special thanks there. So that's pretty cool. All right. So we're going to move on here to this right here. So let's take a look and see what we got inside the box. Wow. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to just slide this off the side. This is going to be token punching madness. So here is the game board. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. This should be quite, a, a, quite an improvement from what uh, the original one looked like. Again, remember this is double-sided, so I think what you're going to see first is the one that I used when I did my playthrough. And I do apologize spacing, but uh, yeah, this looks very familiar. It's not my camera's not sitting, this board's not sitting perfectly flat at the moment because of spacing, but uh, Way up in the corner here that you can't see, it says entrance, coastal, forested, and central. Those are the different types of terrain you can see on the ground. So forested areas here, coastal areas here. Entrances are in red. And then you've got uh, some barriers here, of course. You can't build on those. Um, and then the central area is kind of the, the grayish area. So that's pretty cool. I've got the score tracker on the edge. Uh, down the bottom here, which is just off camera, you've kind of got your basic actions, which you can see right there. If you flip this thing over on its side, it gives you an alternative um, map to play on, which I think is a little bit more unique and something that I didn't see during the prototype stages. So I think this was added during the Kickstarter to just add more variety to the, uh, the Gloomhaven experience. So what you saw on the other side follows what Gloomhaven's land layout looks like even in that game. This one is going to be more for founders and it's just an alternate layout for Gloomhaven. So that's pretty cool to have two sides to that. So we're going to fold that up real quick and make some space because we got a whole bunch of stuff in this box to go through. I'm probably going to be punching tokens forever, but uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That can be quite a bit of fun. So here we go. So again, these are also a massive upgrade from what they were when I originally did my uh, Kickstarter preview. All the buildings now have like a ton of detail. Um, they're actual, I don't know, the artwork looks really good really good. It's such a nice bump up from what they were. Of course you got the classic Gloomhaven coins in there as well, as well as some new new symbolism that I've never seen before for uh, founders. That's pretty cool. So again, I'm not going to be able to name off every single punch board per se because uh, it's been a bit actually since I played this. And I'm not going to be able to remember every single thing, but I'm just going to give you guys kind of a general idea of what everything looks like up close. So you can see the buildings. Looks like it's really solid quality, so that's good. A um, whole bunch of these. So these are all kind of the small tiles, I guess, the smaller buildings. These ones look like they're getting into the larger, larger ones. So it could be, if I remember correctly, these are called prestige buildings. So these are the really fancy ones. So you start getting to like the Graymire State or 
the Shipwright Imports. And the cool thing is, is that all the names of these places, uh, if you've played the ga game Gloomhaven, they're going to have tie-ins to that stuff too. So that's just kind of cool. Just, you know, the fact that, I don't know, I think it's just a really interesting idea that, uh, you know, he built uh, basically a gigantic dungeon crawling type game. And now he's built a game, a Euro game, basically within uh, the Gloomhaven environment. Um, it's really, really cool. It's just, it's really interesting. Um, one of the reasons it drew me to it was just how, how different it was. Um, so here we go. Again, I can't even say what this is. I think this is meant to track resources, potentially progression throughout the game. This was not part of the original prototype, so that's really, really nice. It'll come in handy. Again, we got some more buildings on the side here, like the Soldier's Garrison. Um, I can't tell exactly what's... There, let me see if I can get the shimmer off that for you guys. So the comfort and class, uh, finer things, the ghost fortress, um, the crooked bone, a whole bunch of different cool places. That's awesome. Oh, this is a huge upgrade. I remember this. So this is a big deal. Now the roads in the original, the road tiles in the original game when I was playing the prototype, um, which I will actually link that entire playthrough uh, up in the corner there with the eye symbol showing up so you guys can check it out if you want. But when I did this playthrough, these roads were not this good looking. They were just generic as anything. They looked like basically just a gray tile or something. It was very generic. He came up with actual designs for the roads. So there's some uniqueness to them now. So now when the city gets built up, it just looks cool. Um, he's also got, he had to make them in a certain pattern so that no matter how they're connected, they all look like they do interconnect. So he created the patterns like this with, uh, with eight different uh, routes out of every single um, road tile. So that was pretty cool. And he also looks like he didn't just settle for the same design across the board. He actually spiced it up and made uh, put some different things in there. So he's got trees in some places, wells. Uh, some of them are just open grass. Some of them kind of have things on the side. It's cool. It's cool. I just went to that extra level of detail on those. That was a smart choice on his part. Uh, moving on here, we've got, ooh, these are bridges, it looks like. So just really nice looking bridges. I don't know these might be per player, per, yeah, because there's four different players. I'm guessing these are in color, so green, purple, blue, and yellow, be my guess. I'm not 100% sure. It's been a bit, so I, I, do, I do apologize. I might not be uh, remembering these as well as I should be, but it's been a bit. But, man, the color is just awesome. Oh, here we go. Now this is cool. So here we go. We got, uh, what do we have here? This is the, oh man, the quality of these things are so much better. Just craziness. I, I don't know. I just, re I remember this. I remember opening the prototype up for this and doing the videos and just being like, you know, like a prototype is just a prototype, but it is cool to see the final thing. Like it's just a weird feeling to go from that. Look at this board. Like that is beautiful. Look at the artwork in the center there. That is very cool. So you got nice turn sequence references there. Got some references all the way around. So this is the Savas. You've got the Vermlings. There's the Vermling artwork. Looks awesome. Again, that stuff was not present, or if it was, it was very, very, very generic. Uh, Valrath. Very cool. Look at this stuff. Uh, I love it. I love it. There we go. I forget what this is called. This is, um, ugh, I forget what this is called. Mmm, that's gonna bother me. I should know that, uh, but it's been, it's, like I said, it's been a while, but, uh, but it's just cool. I'm seeing all this stuff in cardboard form instead of the paper form that I saw it in originally. So we got one more bag here of, of other card cardboard stuff, and look at that. Look at the amount of wood tokens there. That is insane. So we've got, uh, Orchid there, the middle. Okay, so you can see the color starting to pop now on these ones. So uh, let me just double check here to make sure I'm not right. Yeah, it is one to four players. So we got this one here, uh, the orchid. We've got the harrower. We've got the humans. We've got the inix, uh, the quattro. So I'll give you guys a quick look at the art on each of them. So you can actually see because I blasted past those really fast. I think that's probably one of the coolest parts of each of them. That's pretty awesome. Of course, the boards are relatively the same, except you'll notice that they even have kind of the, the flare that comes from the Gloomhaven um, uh, cards, the mini cards in your in your deck, so that's pretty awesome. Wow. 
This is very, very cool. Okay, so we got a huge bag of wooden tokens. That is an insane amount of colored tokens. Good gracious. Okay, so baggies, that's good. So they provide baggies, so you can break them up. Um, so one bag in here is just a massive pile of wooden tokens. So there's not too much to show there except they're wooden, they're colored, and they pop. They definitely look good. Then you've got a ton of circle discs. And I, again, cannot remember uh, what the differences were between the two because it's been so long. These are the coolest thing ever. The meeples, the actual meeples that have actual uh, designs on them per their factions. So that's just really, really cool. Let me see if I can show you a couple. So there's one, for instance. Actually, you know what? It might be just easier to drop a whole bunch in my hand all at once. Flip them all over so you can see them. Now obviously some of them are going to be exactly the same because I'm not going to probably grab one of everything, but there you go. They all have their own unique designs on them. Very, very cool. Of course I didn't grab one of every color there. There's uh, even some orange and red. There's orange and red. There's the red one at the bottom there. Purple ones, like yellow, orange. That's awesome. Love it, love it, love it. This is going to be fun to try this again. Looking forward to it. Okay, so we got uh, two packs of cards here. So first pack is a smaller pack of cards and uh, I'm not even gonna try to guess at what these are called again. Let's see, the building guide, okay. So we got building guides. These are for all the players, of course, I'm guessing, or no. Are they all the same? Look the same. Oh, they're different on the back. Oh, that's right, that's right, because certain, ah, that's right. So it's all about uh, metal, population, stone, crops. So each one of these building guides basically tells you how you progress uh, through those particular uh, builds. So these are actually really handy. They look all generic on this side, but there's actually a ton of useful information on this side, like knowledge, metal, population, stone, crops, gems, wood, livestock. Cool. Okay, that makes more sense. And then you've got a whole bunch of achievements of different colors. So if I flip this over, you got like a deliver a resource to three different prestige buildings. Just a bunch of you know achievements. These are going to be very reminiscent of. It uh, looks like it's got uh, mid game, end game, and maybe early on immediately. Uh, but basically, it's, it kind of gives me a vibe of what he had built within Gloomhaven there with his achievements on the uh, the map. Then we've got ourselves a deck of cards, and look at that, guys. Do you remember that from Gloomhaven? Even stayed the same style. Now, this is, I think, where the tie-ins come from. I think, if I remember correctly, some of these cards from the city and road uh, events, if I'm not mistaken, is where some of these can crop up into the Gloomhaven campaign. That's how they tie in. So that's what's really cool, is he's gone that extra step to make some of the uh, results of this gameplay here tie into the beginning of your campaign when you start playing it. That is awesome. Very well thought out that way because it, was, it would be very easy to just miss that step. Uh, but to make the connection between the two games is really, really cool and something fans really, really enjoy, I'm sure. So there's a good number of city cards here without spoiling anything because that would be bad. I'm not going to sit here and dwell on any cards specifically, but there's about... This could be the Kickstarter stuff that was added in and could be what I'm referring to in terms of stuff that goes into Gloomhaven. That's uh, unique. I wouldn't be surprised if it is. We've got cards here that never had art on them before, so this is the first time you're ever seeing uh, Gloomhaven-styled artwork for the cards, which just looks absolutely awesome already. Um, bang on. Looks exactly like I would expect it to look um, if you're talking about the Gloomhaven world. It just looks awesome. I seriously cannot wait for more Gloomhaven content to come out. Like, that next Gloomhaven expansion um, is just going to be obscene. So here we go, we got some uh, pictures of the different uh, major prestige buildings. So these ones you saw in token form earlier, so I'm just kind of whipping through these at a decent pace. All from different, they can all be built in different places, different areas. This looks like your income track, so you got a couple of those. Construct so these are your action cards, I think, if I remember correctly. Construct, recruit, yeah, there's four of each. Upgrade, because every player gets one of these. Trade, actions, and they're basically, these are going to be, this is what you're doing in your action selection portion of the game. That's it, guys. That is actually everything in the game. There is a, uh, looks like there's a cardboard insert in the bottom, and that's about it. Uh, I do have one 
secret number in the bottom here that means probably nothing, but it just says 1112, so maybe I'm the 112th person to have my box uh, put together, who knows. Uh, but besides that, I don't think there's anything else that I'm missing here. This insert will likely stay in the box because it looks like it works well for everything. I'm going to have to obviously bag things up. I'm really interested to get these city cards, play a game of Founders, and then actually merge it into a Gloomhaven campaign. That'll be cool. Uh, but that's it. That's going to sum up the uh, the unboxing for Gloomhaven uh, or Founders of Gloomhaven. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was useful for you to understand what's inside the box. And if you're looking to pick it up in the future, this gives you a good idea of what to expect inside. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for your support. And as always, keep on rolling solo.